What if I told you there's a secret being kept from us, one the mainstream media refuses to acknowledge? Buried in the remote high Andes of Peru are autonomous communities that hold the answers to humanity's most pressing problems. From global disease to the looming food crisis, we've been lied to, and there is a whole world of suppressed knowledge that could change everything. So in this episode, we're going on a treacherous journey across steep mountainous roads to one of the last places on Earth where this knowledge is fiercely protected. Here the guardians of ancient wisdom are pioneering scientific solutions. This isn't just a discovery, it's a game changer and what we uncovered there will truly blow your mind. Welcome to our series on the legendary Sacred Valley of Peru where we have come to meet the ancestors of ancient civilizations and see the revival of ancestral traditions that's fulfilling a prophecy so profound it could change the course of all of our futures. I'm going to remote communities high up in the Andes Mountains of Peru to find the descendants of ancient civilizations. We are going in search of a groundbreaking revival of ancestral wisdom being combined with modern science and a new legal framework to fight off biopiracy. Peru is a country that's rich in biodiversity, making it prime hunting ground for giant multinational corporations who seek to buy up or evict traditional communities, dismantle traditional agriculture and claim patents in seeds, genes, and other organisms. This is known as biopiracy, and it's widely considered an unethical form of theft operating in a legal gray area. And the community we are going to visit today are the guardians of highly important knowledge and resources that are extremely valuable to biopirates, and it all comes down to the humble potato. For generations, a secret has been kept from us, hidden in plain sight, that this simple everyday food we take for granted is actually a very risky bet. Experts have been sounding the alarm that these conventional potatoes are a ticking time bomb on the verge of causing a worldwide catastrophe. Biotech companies are racing against the clock to solve this crisis in sterile laboratories. But today, we're going to find out how it's actually in remote villages in the high Andes, where the guardians of thousands of vibrant super potatoes are pioneering scientific solutions. However, we didn't know just how old they really are, or that some of them are highly medicinal and are used to prevent cancer. Our journey began in Cusco, the former capital of the Incas. But where we are going today is one of the highest places communities are living in the Andes. However, because the location is in remote upper valleys, not properly on Google Maps, and there is no signal, we were slightly worried we were just going to get completely lost and never make it. The higher we went, the more treacherous some of the roads became, and we passed boulders and small landslides at the side of the road. These are areas that can be cut off at an instant. But the last valley we passed through was the scariest because of the height of its sheer drops. And vehicles coming the other way have to wait because there isn't enough room to pass. However, everything was just about to change. We finally entered the high valley of the village and it was like being in another world. This is the Parque de la Papa an extraordinary indigenous biocultural heritage area. It's not just a name, it's actually a groundbreaking legal framework that protects the community from biopiracy by defining collective ownership of their land, the native potato varieties and their traditional knowledge. Here, six communities have been collaborating together since the 1990s to reverse the loss of their native seeds and culture. Hi. Hello. Nice to meet you. Welcome to Parque de la Papa. Thank you very much. Thank we you. were meeting Delia, who was going to show us all the amazing potatoes they grow here at the Park Papa's headquarters. You might be wondering why preserving thousands of varieties of potatoes are so important for the future of the entire planet, and why many biopirates have an interest in them. Well, the white, round, large, and uniform potatoes that most of us around the world are familiar with are extremely fragile. 
The Irish potato famine was a devastating period of mass starvation and disease in Ireland from 1845 to 1849, caused by a potato crop failure due to a plant disease called late blight. This is not just something of the past. Every year, millions of dollars worth of potato crops are wiped out by late blight, in some cases causing food shortages. Fungicide is often used to fight off the disease. However, it's just a temporary fix that actually makes things a whole lot worse, that experts are warning will cause a global food crisis. However, we are about to find out how the Parque de la Papa is working with modern science to create a solution for all of that. Let's go and see my mom. I've been looking forward to meeting her. But before that, Delia wanted to show us something really special first at her house. We set off into the village with Delia to meet her mom. This is a rare experience we had been looking forward to because many aspects of life here haven't changed for potentially thousands of years. It's just down here. Welcome to my house. Wow, it's such a lovely place. Delia's house was really beautiful and nearly everything is constructed from natural materials. They are more or less self-sufficient here and her home's complex reflected that it consisted of a main dwelling and several outhouses and different zones for growing and keeping animals. We brought coca leaves with us to give to Delia's mother as a gift. Coca leaves are a sacred and integral part of Andean life. They are used medicinally as offerings to Pachamama and to help with the high altitude. First place Delia showed us was their guinea pig house. This is our guinea pig house. Oh, wow. This is a serious operation as they have well over a hundred animals here. This is the place where we raise guinea pigs. Guinea pigs also originate from Peru, and it turns out it's very common for people to breed them like this. Some families here raise more than 300 to 500 guinea pigs. Back in England, guinea pigs are pets, but here they are a delicacy or special occasions, and their poop is an important, quite potent potato fertilizer. Their poop is a great guano. We use it to grow potatoes. In fact, there is a town in the Sacred Valley called La May that has several restaurants specializing in guinea pig dishes, and they even have them cooking at the side of the road. Delia's son was very good with the guinea pigs, and he brought one out to show us in the sunshine. Now it was time for a real privilege because Delia's mum wanted to cook us some of their newly harvested potatoes using a very ancient cooking process. The potatoes were being stored traditionally under dry grass which helps retain their nutrients and improves the flavour. Delia's mum grabbed enough for our meal that she chucked onto a blanket to carry away. And then we headed off to cook them but not without forgetting this essential ancient Andean tool called an azada. Delia's mother had built a small oven out of clods of earth on the field. To cook the potatoes, she broke up the oven and cleared a space to pour out the potatoes. Then, the hottest parts of the fire, the black clods of earth and charcoals were mixed in with the potatoes to cook them. And finally, the rest of the hot earth clods were piled on top to stop the heat from escaping. And she did all this with the azada, the same tool for harvesting the potatoes, Interesting how useful and versatile this ancient tool is. Once the potatoes were sufficiently covered, all we had to do was wait for them to cook, which was surprisingly fast. Back at the house, Delia's mother produced a bowl with five more varieties of potatoes they had grown. The colors were incredible, vibrant pinks, mauves, and purples. We had never seen potatoes this color before and we noticed they were the same colors that were being used a lot in their clothes, which is very deliberate because they told us they wear the colors of the potatoes they grow there. Delia and her mother make a lot of their own clothes, which they weave from the wool of llamas and alpaca, and natural colors they make with materials they collect from the local area, and they explain to us what all the animals are in the designs. Mama, alpaca, flor de papa, Chinchilla, Serpente, Puma, Puma Maki, Contor, Mano de Puma, Contor, Condor, Esa, Ojo de Paca, Paca, the Vaca, oh, for the cow's eyes. <laughs> <laughs>
We headed back to the field to collect the potatoes after about 15 minutes. They told me it's very important they don't cook for too long, but nobody looked at a clock or a phone. Delia's mother intuitively remembered at the perfect time. We ate them with cheese and salad, peeling of the skin carefully. They were extremely tasty and fluffy. This was a real privilege and the potatoes here in the Andes are by far tastier than anywhere else. It's really like, tastes like the earthy because it's been put outside in the oven. <clears throat> it's really delicious. When we finished eating, we went to harvest some fresh potatoes. In a small field just next to the house, protected by an earth brick wall, this is what the ancient Azada tool was originally designed for thousands of years ago. The process seemed to be relatively fast and wasn't too labor intensive. However, the most incredible thing was how fertile the soil was. Because firstly, it seemed to have a huge amount of earthworms in it. Earthworms are a very good indicator of fertile soil. We also found mycelium threads too. And that's something that makes the potatoes here so special is they have co-evolved with millions of microorganisms from this area. And Delia's mother said, when they have a lot of mycelium in the soil, they have a bigger and better harvest. Their knowledge of mycelium goes back thousands of years before it was understood by modern science. And it's one of the many reasons that scientists are currently collaborating with them. The community are co-authors on research papers and studies. They have also been collecting data and creating forecasts to adapt to changes in the local climate, such as moving potato crops to higher altitudes where conditions are more favorable, ensuring the potato's survival and adaption for future generations. This is just one element in a whole interconnected system that we are going to learn more about back at the headquarters. Now it was time to find out about the medicinal potatoes and see just how diverse native potatoes really are back at the Park Papas headquarters. Here in Parque de la Papas, we are taking care of and conserving 1,367 varieties of native potatoes in the four communities here. This is a vast library of unique genes, a full color palette with thousands of shapes and shades. This genetic library holds the key to resistance to specific pathogens, tolerance to drought or frost, and unique nutritional properties. We were about to learn some incredible knowledge that you won't find anywhere else. This potato is called paw of the puma. Paw of the puma. This one is called cat's claw. Cat's claw. And this is called the serpent. The serpent. And this variety is called the nose of the alpaca because it's shaped like the nose of an alpaca. This is the rookie potato. It's a wild potato. It's one of the three species of wild potatoes that grow here in the mountains that all of these other potatoes have evolved from. However, the potato's journey from the Andes to Europe created a genetic bottleneck as only a handful of the thousands of diverse varieties were brought over by explorers. This practice of cloning a few varieties for mass production led to a dangerous lack of genetic diversity. Unlike the vast library of genetics here at Parque de la Papa, the conventional potatoes that dominate the global market are more like a single monochrome paragraph copied over and over again. They are all genetically very similar essentially clones making them weak and susceptible to diseases. It's the very reason biopirates are hunting for the genetic material in native potatoes as a solution to all this. They will isolate specific genes such as one that provides resistance to late blight or drought and patent it, which will then be crossbred with conventional high yield potato varieties for commercial profit. The problem with this is that it becomes illegal for indigenous communities to use or sell their own plant without being accused of patent infringement. The communities at the Parque de la Papa understood this threat and have had some near misses. This is why the legal protections established by the communities here are so crucial. They ensure that if a valuable gene is used, that it cannot be privatized and they can receive fair compensation. The community is already engaged in a two-way scientific partnership, and they are doing some amazing things towards research and scientific data that we are going to learn more about later on in the show. And it's not only the genetics that are valuable. 
Delia is about to show us some of the very special medicinal potatoes they grow here and reveal a secret that's been kept hidden from the world for centuries. These potatoes are medicinal. They are antioxidant, anti-cancer, and anti-anemic. This potato prevents cancer and anemia. And this one also prevents cancer and anemia as well. Oh wow, look at the colors. Their colors can also be used as dyes. And this one is called Anno. It's very good for the prostrate for men. And they have to, every morning, they have to take an extract. They can also boil it, they have to eat it. It is very good for the prostate. Delia explained to us that during the process of Spanish colonization, the original name for potato was changed to suppress its true origins. She told us her ancestors called potatoes Aksu Mama, Mama, meaning mother. However, the colonizers changed the name to Papa, meaning Pope or father. Now it's the word used for potatoes in most of Latin America. But there was still one more potato we hadn't heard about. This is called Khachung Wakachi. It means the crying daughter-in-law and it has an old story because it was used as a test of women when they want to get married. If I want to marry a young man, my mother-in-law will give me this potato to see how well I can peel it. And because it's so difficult to peel, the daughter-in-law would cry while they tried to peel it. That's why it's called the crying daughter-in-law. Delia showed us the highly important community-built seed bank, which operates in conjunction with scientific best practices. That's why the building is currently flooded, to maintain a specific humidity for storing seeds. This local bank not only stores seeds, but also facilitates the historic deposit of hundreds of native potato seeds to the Global Seed Vault in Norway. The Parque de la Papa seed bank is so crucial because it's a living collection where potatoes can continue to evolve and adapt to their natural environment, a vital complement to the static deep freeze storage of the global seed vault. They also have a special greenhouse dedicated to cultivating and preserving some of the more endangered ancestral potato varieties, which is so sensitive we could not go inside. Delia showed us a fascinating example of ancient engineering, a 3D model of the community's landscape. Archaeological evidence shows that ancient Andean cultures often created detailed planning models in stone to map terracing and hydraulic systems. Delia explained that at the core of everything here is the ancestral wisdom that the land and the people are not separate entities, but a single, living ecosystem. This worldview, known as Runa Aluyu, guides the entire initiative, asserting that the people's role is to be the custodians of their environment and its biocultural heritage, making conservation an act of sacred stewardship rather than just a scientific project. The Parque de la Papa is an extraordinary example of how indigenous communities can proactively protect themselves from exploitation, conserve their traditional knowledge, and in doing so, provide a successful model for other communities around the world to do the same. If you would like more information on how you can set up an initiative like this, check out our website to download a free PDF. The link is in the description. In our next episode, we'll be discovering the history, roles, and meanings of chewing coca leaves and its rituals, and learn how llamas and alpacas were responsible for the original domestication of potatoes thousands of years ago, when we visit another autonomous community that are thought to be the direct descendants of the Incas, where they don't have police, hospitals, or pharmacies, because they have chosen to maintain their ancient traditional culture. So don't forget to subscribe for that. Thanks for watching.